Why interest only for investment property? All right, guys, we're going to talk all about investment properties and interest only loans. You're going to want to stay tuned because this is a great one. I really appreciate the question. Thank you for asking it. If you've got a question like this, you'd like to have me put a video together for you, type it in the comments below and I'll create a video just like this for you and my other subscribers. Thanks for being a subscriber. So here's the deal. Um, what I did early on in my uh, career of building my rental portfolio is I started getting interest only loans. Now these are double-edged sword here. So you've gotta be careful with this. And I'm gonna talk about the difference between an interest only and a variable rate. Um, so let's talk about this. So typically when you've got a loan, you're getting a 30 year loan okay what happens with that is the rate let's just say the rate's five percent um you want to get a fixed rate okay that means each time you make a payment let's say the payment's a thousand dollars each time you make a payment if you owe a hundred thousand dollars a certain portion of that 50 bucks is going to go towards paying down that hundred thousand dollars now 30 years, this is year one. In year 30, the majority, like $800, is gonna go to pay towards that loan. That's called an amortization, where it's very little going towards principal, most going towards interest. And at the end, most is going to towards principal and very little is going towards interest. So that's how it works. And that's one of the ways the banks actually get you, because most people only keep their, their property for 12 years, which means you are most of the time paying towards interest and very little towards principal. But that's a whole amortization and that's a topic for another day. Now, here's the thing. If you can not pay towards your principal, you are going to have a lower payment. So rather than $1,000, maybe your payment's going to be $850 per month, but all of it is going towards interest. So meaning at the end, you're still going to owe $100,000 on this property, even if you pay on this for 10 years. So what banks will do uh, on occasion is they will do a 30-year AM meaning they will have it over 30 years, a 10 year note due, which means you have to pay off this loan in 10 years or refinance it. And they will do like, a, and this is what's important, a fixed interest rate of, at whatever percentage for that entire 10 years. And this is where a lot of people got in trouble is they would do variable, which basically means a variable rate means it goes up or it goes down based upon prime or based upon LIBOR, which is basically an index. So if the market goes up, then you're gonna be paying more. If the market goes down, you're gonna be paying less. Now with this, they typically have what's called a floor. <laughs> I did that opposite. The floor is down here and a ceiling is down here. So they'll say we're prime plus 2% or LIBOR plus 2%. So if, if prime is at 3%, um, and they have a 2% margin, they add to that, you're paying 5% on your interest rate um, for that period. But they may have a ceiling and say, you know what, we won't allow it to go over 10%, but they may have a floor and say it can't be less than 6%. So if prime plus a margin is less, which in this case is 5%, but the floor is 6%, they're gonna charge you the 6%. Um, and if it's greater, they'll charge you that. So let's say prime was 5%, their margin is two, that's seven, it's greater than the six, then you'll be paying 7%. But if it goes over 10%, they'll just charge you the 10%. That's called a floor and a ceiling if you're looking to do that. However, I am against, I do not like variable loans. I would not be getting a variable loan for this type of a situation. There may be some others, but you wouldn't want to do this on a rental property. So what I like is fixed rates. So it's fixed for 10 years. Well, this is what it allowed me to do is I went and bought several properties and um, what I was able to do is get interest only on all of these. And then I saved because each one of these, let's just saved, uh, say I saved $200 each on each one of these. I took the $200 savings from each one and I paid it down onto one property until I could get this property paid off. So basically what I'm doing is rather than chipping away a little bit at each property, paying it down, I took the what I made from all the properties and paid it towards one so I could try and accelerate paying off this first property that I purchased. And then if I bought another one and I could get an interest only with the idea to pay this one off in 10 years, and then I've got to do some refinancing and that type of stuff so that I can make that. So the idea is to, to snowball it, taking all of my, um, my 
my what I was making. So I could take that plus I could take the cash flow and then I could pay that property down. Now here's what's interesting. Once this property is paid down, let's say it's $1,500 a month. And then I could take the entire $1,500 a month, put it towards this property, property number two, plus I can take the $600 that I was having and put a property number two. So then I can pay this property off in eight years. And then if I take this $1,500 and put it towards this one, I can pay this property off in three years. Now, I'm just giving some examples of what I did. And that's how I snowballed a lot of these things because I was getting some interest only for investments. But there is a double-edged sword here. And if you'd like to know the double-edged sword, hit that thumbs up a button smash it for me and tell me i'm doing a great job creating this free content for you so uh here's the double-edged sword guys you've got to be responsible with this i think what most happens is people get interest only loans they take that money and they spend it somewhere else um, they use it to go to disneyland or they use it to pay some bills or use it for something else if you're that person don't do this strategy it's not going to work for you but if you're disciplined and you're willing to say hey I am gonna focus, laser focus, everything towards this one property, and I've got multiple properties, I'm gonna put everything towards that till I pay it off. This is kind of like a debt snowball strategy, but the reverse, it's kind of an investment snowball strategy, where what I'm actually doing is putting everything towards these other properties so I can accelerate the rate of payoff on these. But something to keep in mind here, this whole strategy only works if you're not dipping into the funds. You're basically doing a lot of work buying and managing all these properties and you're not gonna make money until 10 years from now or 15 years from now, once you've got all these properties paid off and then you're making a nice you know, $8,000 a month in cash flow because you've got all these properties paid free and clear. I think it's a great strategy where what you're doing is you're focusing all the payments onto one property to get paid off. Once it's paid off, you can leverage that to the others. This is a long-term strategy. This is not something that you can plan on doing in a year or two. This is something you've got to plan on taking a decade or more um, and it's going to free that money up so you can focus on paying down the properties and then um, lots of people say, think I've got to have hundreds of properties or 30 properties what are the cases I don't think so I think most people need five to seven properties that are paid off depending on how much it brings in um, and that's that could be a great goal so maybe you buy a property a year for five years or for seven years and maybe you get an interest only loan and you put all that towards it you take no money out everything including the cash flow goes to that one property until it's paid off and then you can start snowballing and paying off the rest of them the rest of them a lot faster so in doing all this in making a good offer on a property to make sure that you're buying the property right where you're gonna have the cash flow that you need to make a strategy like this work when you're doing these interest only payments um, you're gonna want to use an offer calculator and I put one together I will give it to you absolutely free um, all you got to do is text me your email address to 435-294-0433. Text me your email address and I'll send that right over to you. I've also got a video on, is it better to buy or build an investment property? Check that video out. Um, you're going to want to see it. I also have a blog post. What is the average profit on flipping a house? If you're interested in more going into the flipping rather than some of the long-term holds, I'll put link that down in the comments below. Otherwise, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I would certainly love to have you and make it a very profitable day. Bye for now.